Hi, everyone. So my name is Brad Topol. I'm an IBM Distinguished Engineer of Open Technology and Developer Advocacy. And I'm here to talk to you about Code and Response, which is an initiative that IBM is leading to help you leverage open source to mitigate natural disasters. Um, but before we get into that, let me first talk about IBM's rich history of contributing to open source. Now, I've been at IBM 21 years. I lived this open source history. So I'm not going to talk to the speaker notes with the marketing approved sanitized talk. I'm going to give you the VH1 behind the music version of this history. Um, let me take you all back to 1999. This was my first year at IBM. We had our own proprietary web server. It was called the Lotus Go web server. And let me be gentle. It was terrible. It was proprietary, it had limited functionality, and it probably had about 1% market share. And I was in the room when they announced that we were gonna stop using the Lotus Go web server, and we were gonna put all our effort behind this new open source web server called Apache. And we were gonna bring in a team of our best developers to contribute to Apache, add enterprise security features. And when they announced that in the room, everybody cheered. We knew it was the right decision. So if we fast forward past that a little bit, uh, similar story, we had a great integrated development environment called Eclipse, $40 million worth of development. Uh, we gave it away. Now, some people might have found that shocking, but we made it open source and started a foundation. But it was the right thing to do. If you look at how Eclipse has grown and the ecosystem around it, it's been amazing. Uh, the pluggable tools, the extensibility. And so moving forward from that, uh, we've been huge contributors to OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes. I personally have had the honor of leading large teams and being a contributor myself to both OpenStack and Kubernetes. So quick shout out to my friends in both those communities, Keystone team and the Kubernetes doc team and Conformance team. Uh, working in open source for the past seven years at IBM has been the best part of my 21 year career. So IBM's also had a quick history, uh, a long history of helping solve society's problems. One of, uh, one of the most notable, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary, is the moon landing. You may not know this, but alongside the NASA engineers, we had 4,000 IBMers helping to land the lunar module on the moon. Those were IBM systems that were responsible for that. And I'm a little pressed for time, so I won't cover the other ones, but we've had a great history of, of helping to solve society's greatest problems. And now we're onto our new initiative. And this is the biggest one we've tackled so far. Natural disasters affect 2.5 billion people every year with property loss, human loss, human suffering. And we cannot prevent natural disasters, but we can come up with better solutions to prepare for them and better solutions for how we respond to them. And so this is our code and response initiative that we started last year. So what did we do? Well, we first said we got all these great building blocks at IBM. We have the weather company. That's an IBM company. So we have all the weather forecasting APIs, alert APIs. We have AI. We have Internet of Thing technology, all these great building blocks. And everything, you know, if we could just go engage the open source community and get people involved to participate in this effort. And so, how could we do this? What, what would get people excited? Everybody's so busy, but they all want to help. So we could have given away t-shirts, we could have given away hoodies, but what we said is we're gonna have a programming competition, get about four, four of your, your favorite friends to build a team, and we're gonna give a $200,000 cash prize. That was quite a nudge. So as you might expect, we did get a little bit of participation. Uh, last year we had over 100,000 developers participate, over 2,500 applications uh, built. Oh, people from over 156 nations participated. Uh, we did this jointly with the United Nations and Clinton Global Initiative. Really, really cool. And let me show you the winner from last year, which was Project Owl. So basically what Project Owl was is when there's a natural disaster like a hurricane, all the cell phones stop working, all the communication towers get blown out and, and, and don't work. And so the idea that the winner came up with, Project Owl, was we're gonna have these little plastic things called ducks, 
and over the disaster area, we're gonna spread them all around. And those ducts are gonna form an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And now people can connect to that ad hoc Wi-Fi network and be able to say things like, I need food, I need water, I need help. So the Wi-Fi duck network with their incident management system all built on open source and IBM uh, technologies, this was the winner. Now the cool part of code and response is we don't just stop with, hey, you won a competition. We have a five year, $30 million initiative to actually deploy these things out in the field. And so this year we're actually doing large scale tests in Puerto Rico with Project Owl. Now, at this point, I want to bring out Pedro Cruz. Pedro was our Puerto Rico hackathon winner. This natural disaster personally affected him, and he's going to come out and tell you his solution that was a hackathon winner uh, for dealing with natural disasters. So come on out, Pedro. Hey, buddy. There you go. Thank you, Brad. So let me just say it's an honor to be here and talk about my story. So it was September 20th, 2017. And this is my island. This is where I live. Um, it's Puerto Rico. And after the hurricane, we were left without electricity, without communications for months. And we were left with the big, enormous challenge of giving relief to 3.5 million people. So after the hurricane, um, I was left without anything. My, my phone didn't work. Um, I ventured off to look for my family, my friends, and my grandma. Luckily, I was able to find them. However, we still had to deal with the problem of communications. So it took multiple months to get everything back online. Um, and we saw a lot of messages like this. SOS, we need water and food. These messages were written on the ground, on the roofs of houses. Um, and when people saw helicopters flying in but didn't receive any help, that's why people started writing these messages. So at the Call for Code Puerto Rico Hackathon last year, I created DroneAid. And DroneAid is a software that uses AI, object detection, to be able to look for these messages after a natural disaster with drones. So through open source, we can create solutions that are available to the rest of the community um, and hopefully save lives. So I encourage all of you today to look at the Call for Code website. Um, and if you have an idea, we have time to submit your application. So thank you. Right. Thank you, Pedro. It's just an outstanding personal story. Um, so, I've just got a few minutes left, but the competition is still going on. There's still time to submit for this year. It is a five-year initiative, so you can get a jump on next year. At developer.ibm.com, call for code, we have a lot of great information on natural disasters and great ideas to how you could get started in helping you think about what solution you want to come up with. Um, again, we have a large number of building blocks. We have all those weather company APIs. We have Internet of Things. We have artificial, artificial intelligence. We have um, machine learning. All these wonderful building blocks that are available for you to use as you come up with your solution with your team. And again, we're back to still having a $200,000 cash prize. And for the ideas that are really, really good, it doesn't stop there. You don't just get your pat on the back. We're going to fly around the world. We're going to find places where we can field test your ideas and deploy them in the large and see how they really work. And so um, come see us at the IBM booth. We've got a lot of things. We've got some quick labs, some quick start labs that'll help you get familiar with these types of building blocks and technologies. Uh, you can learn about, more about that. We have a drone challenge. And at 10 o'clock, I'm doing a book signing for my Kubernetes book. So please come see me, come talk to me there. And um, we really, really urge you to get involved and participate. You know, I've been working in the open source community for the past seven years, and one thing I've learned is uh, open source developers and contributors in particular really do want to make a difference. They want to make the world a better place. And this is a great opportunity for everyone here to, to go do that. So thank you very much, and we hope you'll come join us and participate. <laughs>